Once the knowledge base has been created, the next step is to describe the objects of reality using Genexus objects. To identify these objects of reality, we recommend paying attention to the words used by the users. Back at the travel agency that requested the application, we were told that they want to record their customers, the tourist attractions they recommend, and the countries and cities they offer tours in. Based on this information, we identify four objects of reality to describe in the knowledge base. Clients, tourist attractions, countries, and cities. For each object of reality that we have identified, we'll create a Genexus object of transaction type. The first Genexus objects created in the knowledge base are transactions, as they allow us to describe objects or actors of reality. Let's go back to Genexus to do this. To create a Genexus object, we click on the Objects node and right-click to display a context menu. From there, we select New and then Object. We choose this option and see the following dialog box to create a Genexus object, where we can choose the type of object that will be created. We choose the transaction object type and call it Customer. We click on the Create button. Here we can see the transaction that has been created, ready for us to start defining its structure. All transactions have these sections, which we'll describe later on. The transaction structure allows us to select the attributes or fields that describe an object of reality. At the travel agency, we were told that they want to record every customer's name, surname, address, phone, and email. Therefore, this data that must be recorded for each customer matches the attributes that have to be created for this transaction. So, let's start creating the customer transactions attributes. Note that the first line is created for us to enter the first attribute. Also note that an icon key is associated with this line. The reason for that is, in every transaction, an attribute, or set of attributes, must be set with identifier or key role. The concept of identifier or key attribute is aimed at uniquely identifying every customer recorded or any object of reality. In other words, we will not be able to enter two customers with the same identifier value. We will now set the key attribute of the customer transaction. Since we're not required to save their passport or ID card numbers, which could be candidates for identifier roles, we will create an attribute called customer ID and soon we will set it to be auto-numbered in sequence. Note that if we press the period key on the keyboard, Genexus automatically shows the transaction name as prefix in the attribute name. We only have to type ID after the customer prefix. We press the tab key and choose the data type that will be stored for this attribute. Clicking on the arrow displays the data types available in Genexus. For this attribute, we will leave the default data type that is to say, a numeric of four digits with no decimals. We press Enter and start to create the second attribute. A new line is opened. And once again, we type period and complete the attribute name with name, that is to say, customer name. To set the data type stored by the customer name attribute, in this case, we select the character data type. Note that if we type an opening bracket, the default length is 20 characters. We'll leave it unchanged. We follow the same steps to enter the customer last name attribute, which will also be of character type, length 20. Now we add the customer address attribute. In this case, it will be of character type, length 50. The next one is customer phone of character type, length 15. Lastly, we enter the customer email attribute. In this case, its data type could be character of length 50. We'll save this transaction. Note that an asterisk is being displayed in the customer transaction tab. 
This means that the transaction is being edited, and when we save the changes, the asterisk disappears. Also note that this green box indicates that changes have been made to this section. We select the Web Form section. And since ours is a web application, Genexus has automatically designed a web form according to the defined structure. This form will allow users to add, change, and delete customers. OK. After creating only these settings, how about we take a look at everything that has been automatically created by Genexus and run the resulting application?